this video, we are going to start inputting our first floor plans and we're going to talk about setting up the drawing before we begin. So we're going to click into the assignment, which is first floor plans, and we're going to cover this area right here. And I'm going to read through the assignment. Using the program that you were given in your preliminary design, you are to begin inputting your first floor plan only. Use the architectural residential default template to begin inputting your plan. Create a folder called your name and then the word house after it and name the file in a folder called your name and the house and this should be in your OneDrive folder. Be sure to go under options button before you save and change the number of backups from 20 to 5. Revit automatically is set to 20 and we do not need 20 backup files because a Revit backup file is basically an exact copy of your file at the latest point. So that is like having 20 full size Revit files. So we only need about five. You will update this drawing each time we do a new part of the project. You are not going to create multiple plans for each assignment. It is going to be a continuation from this point on. We're going to make sure that we have the correct wall type set. On our exterior walls, we're going to use 2x6 structure. And on our interior walls, we're going to use 2x4 structure. Now I'm going to go into my Revit file. Now that I am in Revit, I want to go over here and I want to go to New. And this time, I want to go to my architectural template, but I want to go on into Browse. And I need to make sure I select the one that says residential. Please make sure that you pick the residential template. If you pick anything else, you're going to have issues with components that are already loaded into the template. Again, I cannot stress enough that you use the residential default template and say open and say OK. Now that I am in my Revit file, here is where I want to do my save as, and I want to save it as a project, and I want to go to my OneDrive, and I'm going to create a folder called Wade Residence. You're going to create one with your name, and then inside that I'm going to put that it is my project over here is where I want to change the number of backups. You see it says 20. I want to save this to 5 and say OK. And then go ahead and save. Before I continue on, I need to understand what kind of walls we're going to have in this project. So I have sketched here for you some interior and exterior wood framed walls. I believe we have talked about that when we say 2x4, it is actually not a 2x4. It is 1.5 by 3.5. The reason being is when the wood is cut, it is cut green and it has water in it. Then when they send it on, they put it through a kiln and they dry it out. And when it dries, it shrinks. So that is how we end up with the 3.5 by 1.5, but it is still called a 2x4. So for our interior walls, we are basically going to have a layer of gypsum board which is going to be one half inch then we are going to have our wood stud which is three and a half inches and then again we're going to have another layer of one half inch gypsum board we are going to take these walls up to nine foot six our ceiling heights are going to be at nine feet so we want to take our walls up about six inches higher we don't want to take them up any higher than that because we have to be able to get ductwork, lighting, plumbing, and all of those other items that go up in the ceiling over those walls without having to cut through them. So again, we will have basically a four and a half inch wall that goes up to nine foot six. If we look at the exterior wall, and I'm gonna start from the interior side, we are gonna have a half inch of gypsum board. Then between the gypsum board and the stud, we are going to have a vapor barrier. This basically is a very, very thin sheet of plastic. And what it does is on the inside, if it's cold and on the outside, if it's hot, we get condensation. So this helps to keep the condensation from coming into our gypsum board and creating mold. And then our wall structure itself is actually going to be a two by six, which is five and a half inch wood stud. And this will have insulation in it. 
The Revit wall that's already pre-created does not show the insulation, but there is insulation in this wall. We need that to help keep our utilities at a reasonable cost and to keep our spaces warm and cooled. Then on the outside of the stud, we usually use a product like some kind of plywood sheathing, a drywall sheathing, whatever it is, it needs to be used for exterior purposes. And the particular wall that's created in Revit is a half inch plywood sheathing. So we are going to use that. Then on the outside of that, before we have our exterior finish, is going to be an air infiltration barrier. Again, this is a very thin sheet of material. You've probably seen it on the outside of houses before they start putting up brick or something like that. It might say Tyvek or it might say Meeks Lumberyard, it might say Menards, it could say different things on it. It's an air barrier, so it basically lets some air in to the material, but tries to help keep out moisture. So if we get air circulating in here, then we don't create a cavity for mold to collect. And then on the outside, depending on what type of wall we're gonna use, you will have your exterior materials. If it is a brick wall, it's gonna have brick and an air space. If it's a siding, it's going to be just right up against the sheathing. We will look at that when we get into Revit, which we are going to go to now. Now that I'm in Revit, I want to, before I ever begin drawing, I want to go in and make sure I have the correct wall types. So if I go under wall and I go to wall architectural, we're gonna start with an interior wall type. Again, they are alphabetical. If I come down here, you see I have a four and a half inch partition. If I click on that, I can go in and see exactly how it's constructed to make sure it is constructed the way that I want it. So I'm gonna go into edit type and I can see right up here it says interior four and a half inch partition. And where I wanna go look is right here in the structure. So if I click on edit, You'll see if it starts on the exterior side and goes to the interior side. So on the exterior, I have a half inch of gypsum wall board, which is what I want. And you'll notice you have a core boundary. This core boundary, when they create these walls, are going to show up on each side of the structural element. So that just shows up as core boundary and it says zero feet, zero inches. Then I have my actual wood stud which they call softwood lumber, and you can see it actually is shown at three and a half inches. We draw it true to dimension. Then on the interior side, we also have the half inch of gypsum board, and I'm going to say okay. Now, if I come over to use this wall, before I ever use it, I wanna change this to be nine foot six, and hit apply. So that interior wall is now set up. I wanna look now at my exterior walls. If I scroll back up here, you see I have exterior brick on wood stud. I have exterior wood shingle on wood stud. I have exterior wood shingle over wood siding on wood stud. And then I have one that is just wood siding on wood stud. Now siding is going to be a horizontal material. A shingle is going to be something that looks like the shape of a shingle that you have on your roof. So this one has a combination. It has shingle over the siding, so it has something that changes the surfaces in between, and then of course brick. Now the brick that's in here is kind of a purplish color, and we won't be using that color, but we can change that. So at this point, I don't want you to be too concerned about these exterior finishes. What I wanna make sure of is that we have the right structure for our wall. So if I go into the brick and I go into edit type, unless I change this, I can just continue on with this. If I think I'm going to change it or if I decide at a later time to change it, then I would want to duplicate it. But I'm gonna click on edit. And again, it's gonna start from the exterior side. So it's got three and five eighths inch for the brick. And then you'll see it has an airspace. We typically have an airspace between our brick and our sheathing because brick is a porous material. So water can penetrate through that. If we have that air space in there, it circulates the air and it gives it an opportunity to dry out so that it doesn't create mold and go on into our building. 
So we'll have an airspace. Again, depending on where you live, the airspace thickness can change. But this one has one inch and we're gonna go with that. And then we have the air infiltration barrier that I talked about. You notice it has a zero feet, zero inch thickness because it really doesn't change the thickness of our wall because it's very, very thin. I can't do a finish up here and put in zero. It won't allow me. But if I have this selected as membrane layer, then it will let me put in the zero feet, zero inches. Then I have my plywood sheathing, which is a half inch my core boundary, my stud, which is five and a half inches. Then I have my vapor retarder, which again is like the air infiltration barrier. It's at zero feet, zero inches. And then I have my interior gypsum board at half inch. If we look up here, we can see that the total thickness of this wall is 11 and an eighth inch. You'll notice it has a couple other things here. Each one of the materials that are involved in this wall construction has a resistance to it and a thermal mass to it. So this calculates what that is for this entire wall. If I change something in here, this will change probably along with the total thickness. The mechanical engineer needs to know this information. This is what he uses to do his calculations for heating and cooling. So this is very, very important. So I'm going to say, okay and say okay. So now I have the wall I want to use for my exterior and I have the wall that I want to use for my interior. So I am ready to start inputting my walls and we will get that going in the next video.